the Pac-Man Museum Plus is now available for Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, and Windows. The latest version comes with a variety of exciting games. It's been priced at just $19.99 for the digital downloads, but is the visit to this museum even worth the price of entry? Stick with us and find out. Before we share our final verdict, let's analyze the features of the latest version. First up, a sequel to the Pac-Man Museum. In the entertainment world, we've frequently seen that reboots of the original shows or movies have always stood the test of time for days, weeks, months, years, even decades to come. The same is the case with video games. So, it should come as no surprise that the developers of the original Pac-Man games wanted to release a new Pac-Man collection on his 42nd anniversary. Well, everyone loves some good nostalgia, so why not profit off it? But, the Pac-Man Museum Plus is the official sequel to the original Pac-Man Museum, which was released for Xbox on Xbox Live Arcade and PSN in 2014. Every game from the previous version, except for some variations, returns with newer titles never before introduced in a compilation. As the compilation had many different versions of the Pac-Man, it's hard to imagine that there are some rare games that will be introduced in the franchise for the first time. Pack and Roll Remix and Pack Motos are released for the first time on a non-Nintendo system. Besides this, the Super Famicom version of the game Pack in Time is also included in the collection. Next we have Pac-Man Crossing New Horizons. Before you're able to play the games that the latest version has to offer, you're first introduced to the overworld of the game. This allows players to take full control of the Pac-Man, who's in charge of running and maintaining an arcade, and all the games that have been featured in the collection can be seen from the start here. Still, you can get multiple variations of the same cabinet, but what's the reward when you finally complete the missions in the games? You can earn wallpapers, furnishing, and background music for your great performance, and that doesn't require a lot of grinding. The best thing is, most of these missions in each game are pretty similar. For instance, you'll either need to eat a specified number of ghosts or win a specified number of rounds in total or on a single credit. Speaking of the credits, there's also a currency system in the game. You'll be given 500 coins in the beginning and each game takes a specific sum of coins to start. So what's new in the Pac-Man Museum Plus? Depending on the performance of the player, you can earn even more coins. You can use it to purchase more decorations and also the Gashapon machine. Yes, there's also a Gashapon machine. Besides this, you only need to spend the coins on the arcade games and the console games are completely free. So yes, there's never any risk of not being able to play any of the games. We've already mentioned the inclusion of Pack and Roll Remix and Pack Motos, which were never released outside the Wii compilation. Besides this, it also features a console port of Pac-Man 256. So how many games have been included? To be exact, the Pac-Man Museum has 14 plus games. Isn't it exciting? Most of the titles have been taken from the original version, but there's also the introduction of several new fantastic games. No surprise that they've included the standard Pac-Man game here. It has stood the test of time and is still popular after several decades. The Pac-Man Championship Edition is still amazing and a refreshing take on the Pac-Man with more colorful and engaging layout. Besides this, the Pac-Man Battle Royale still offers the best multiplayer fun that you can have while playing with friends. Other beloved Pac-Man games include Pac and Pal, Pac-Land, Super Pac-Man, Pac-Mania, Pac Attack, Pac-Man Arrangement, and Pac in Time. These were the titles that have also been featured in the original version. As for the newer games, we'll have a detailed look at Time, which include Pac Motos, Pac and Roll Remix, and Pac Man 256. And now for Pac Motos. This is the latest addition to Pac Man. It's actually the spin off of the 1985 arcade game of Bandy Namco. The aim of the original game is to knock down all of the enemy pods off in order to move to the next level. You can also get knocked off from the same grid by the enemy pods, turning the game into a positioning and strategy battle. The Pac Motos version also sticks to the same set of rules, but obviously in the Pac Man aesthetic. Each level is divided into different worlds, and at the end of each of these worlds, there's a boss that you must defeat in order to move on. But those red and blue pods aren't the only enemies. You'll also have to face a clever spider like enemy, as well as a purple pod that mimics the movements of your Pac Man. No wonder these guys require the most strategies and positioning, as most of the fights will stay deadlocked. And after some time, the pieces of the map will disappear until either the enemy or the player falls off. It also has power-ups spread throughout the game that boost up the Pac-Man's power, giving him the ability to jump or dash attack. You can use them in the subsequent rounds or after losing a life. Up next, the Pack and Roll Remix. The original version of this game was released on the Nintendo DS that had a complete storyline. You could even control the Pac-Man with a touch screen, but the Wii version not only omits the storyline, but it also 
also allows the Pac-Man to be controlled through Wiimote and Nunchuck. In fact, the game in Pac-Man Museum Plus completely eliminates the use of these controls for a simpler gaming experience. In order to clear the levels, the players have to get Pac-Man to eat a specific number of pellets to be able to get to the checkpoint gate. It also features power-ups that can assist the users, such as a suit of armor that can help deflect the tracks and sink underwater. You can also get Pac-Man to glide across the gaps by wearing a flight cap. And just like a standard Pac-Man game, he can also eat the ghosts roaming around after eating a power pellet. Just like the Pac-Motos, this game also has the similar late 2000s aesthetic. The graphics are vibrant and soft as they fit right at home with the other Pac-Man games. While the gameplay here may seem simple to learn, it's actually pretty hard to master. Now we have Pac-Man 256. This is also one of the latest additions to the compilation. Now this game may have classic Pac-Man gameplay, but it comes with a twist. It has this glitchy pool of glitchiness that keeps getting closer and closer to the Pac-Man as time goes on. So you have to make sure that he consumes as many pellets as possible while avoiding the ghosts. It's literally game over for you if he ends up touching any of the ghosts or murkiness that lurks at every step. Just like the previous games, you can also get power-ups here, which will help in achieving a faster survival time. If you didn't notice, the glitchy murkiness and the goal of eating 256 pellets is actually a reference to the kill screen of the original Pac-Man. In fact, the game glitches out after level 256, so it gets very difficult, if not impossible, to continue playing. But this is actually what you can expect from such a console port of a mobile title, and its inclusion in the compilation only shows how much time has passed. So, is Pac-Man Museum Plus worth buying? Now, let's get to the real talk. The goal of keeping an arcade that the user can customize to their taste, the added incentives of plating each game, and the amount of titles as compared to the original version should all easily make it a four-star game, right? To burst your bubble, it has one big flaw. There's no doubt that it has a cool presentational interface, but it gets overshadowed by its really poor frame rate. Yes, we're really not joking. And considering the fact that it's only got one 3D room, it's also pretty basic when it comes to the graphics. So again, the curse of Unity has struck the developers. This choppiness even appears to be more noticeable when in the handheld mode, even though it's definitely present on the big screen too. So no doubt, the frame rate is a big disappointment, and it should have been ironed out. But you can't deny the fact that the arcade overworld is a wonderful addition. And while you spend some time experimenting and creating your arcade environment, the novelty of the gimmick is also short-lived. Aside from the presentation, you can't really find fault with the quality of the titles nor the comprehensiveness of this collection. So for the ultimate enthusiasts of the Pac-Man, this is definitely the best roundup yet and worth investing your money. In fact, you can call it the Pac-Festival as it offers unlimited hours of fun gaming. That's a wrap for the video. Are you going to buy the Pac-Man Museum Plus? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos like this. See you in the next one.